everyone. This is Mario Cardenas with Affinity Home Lending. I'm a, a local loan officer. So I want to show you really quick how easy it is for a borrower to complete a mortgage loan application, uh, better known as Affinity Made 1003 or URLA. Uh, that is an acronym for Uniform Residential Loan Application. So uh, the first thing is that I would send the borrower my website to go apply after consulting them. Uh, that's mortgagemario.com where all of your wildest dreams come true and that's guaranteed. And then that's gonna load. And we'll click apply now. That's gonna send the applicant to a secure software called Blink where they can securely answer all their information and also upload their documents such as like um, asset statements and pay stubs into a secure portal. Um, now they would create an account. I already have a um, an account, so I'm just going to click already have an account. Should let me put in my credentials here. So um, it's easy, just your email and password. And if um, a borrower ever wants to create like a another loan and apply for something else, maybe they have a they originated a you know a um, primary with me and they want to buy an investment, then they actually can use their same credentials and then apply for. A uh, completely separate loan in the future. So let's load that. Okay, and we're just going to start the application. So we're going to do a purchase. Um, I don't know if you've heard, but the Fed actually has increased rates 0.5%, biggest increase since uh, 2000, and they have announced that they will continue to raise rates. So with that being said, uh, refinances are kind of obsolete at the moment. So we'll and then a Woodstock purchase price. Let's go maybe 400,000, kind of around average price. Go 5% down. So, okay. And just kind of typical questions. It walks the borrower right through. If it's a veteran, they would click obviously yes there. Click next. Unmarried, no. And it literally just walks the you know the borrower through this. And the main thing is just for me to have consent to look under the hood until someone applies. Then I really can't investigate further as far as their pre-qualification and pre-approval status. Um, we'll say no. They can apply with someone else. If yes, it would it would actually add another borrower to the file. But we'll just keep it simple. My birthday is May 27, 1992. Got my social in there. Um, I am a American citizen. Put in an old address there. Um, has a lot of this already pre-populated. We'll agree to that. Okay, and if they're working with a realtor, yes. We'll go with fake realtor. They can enter any of the information for the realtor there, and that way I'm staying the same page, all parties. And I like this too, because they're safeguards. They can't skip through the application here, so. Um, please provide your purchase property type. Okay, well, perfect. So um, definitely need to know that because obviously for debt to income ratios and loan products, it's good to know the type of home. Uh, in this case, I'll just pick a single family residence since that's kind of just generic thing to pick there. It's loading. You honestly spend more time probably loading this and actually filling out an application. Okay, let's get this set up here. And then, yeah, it has a little picture of me there. <laughs> um, okay, we're gonna go next. So it walks them through all kind of the milestones application. So employment's a biggie here. So we're gonna go, hey, I'm employed, employer name, fake employer. that address there, phone number there. 
industry, just click accounting, doesn't matter, just kind of a here, Georgia, position, fake, maybe just put a loan officer, put something in here, here, start, we'll put January 2019. Um, it questions like this, am I employed by a family member or a property seller? No, that can give me insight and things. And then we can enter a base income. So someone's salary, they would put in their base over time. Oh, overtime, bonus commission, other kind of really important they specify that. Um, before I really dive any deeper, I would look at their, their pay stubs and um, W-2s and things like that, just to make sure that they have their income and right. But if you do talk to uh, someone, you would tell them to put in their, their monthly gross income. Um, okay, so we can actually automatically verify income and by doing a verification of employment at times. So let's go and click that. No other monthly income. Um, real estate owned, if, if someone obviously has any other real estate encouraged for them to enter this, I would, I would gather that with a needs document because um, a lot of times, sometimes people inherit property and they don't actually have a mortgage, but they do have taxes, insurance, and association dues that um, other loan officers would miss. And so um, definitely this is just good for the preliminary process because sometimes people might miss this on the application. But um, I always encourage after I you know, I speak to a borrower to have them, you know, fill this out to uh, as complete as possible. But that is why a good loan officer will gather all needed documents. So um, assets and, you know, could put in here if I'm receiving any gifts or anything, maybe I'm getting, you know, a gift of a cash gift from my father because he loves me dearly and he definitely would give me this much money. So we'll put $30,000 there. Yep, thank you, dad. So we'll see that in the application. Um, if they fill this out before I talk to them or um, I'll have a good idea as far as assets. And, but obviously we go through all that. So um, here's all the declarations. This is standard procedure in a 1003. Um, and not going to read through all these, but it, I would go through all this with a borrower if I was collecting this over the phone. Um, Humda Law, the Home Mortgage Disclosure Act, actually uh, mandates that we um, ask for demographic information. You don't have to disclose this, but this actually prevents any kind of discriminatory uh, lending and is actually standard procedure on a um, loan application. So I will put Hispanic Latino, I guess I am it's always iffy. I guess I'm Hispanic. I do have some Hispanic background um, in me. Okay, there. Okay, and Hispanics actually are white. So then the government will be able to monitor that and prevent any kind of discriminatory lending. Um, they have different laws like reverse redlining and redlining, where actually you know um, lenders actually intentionally try to target specific demographic or geographical areas or uh, or vice versa not in certain areas areas like that so um all just kind of protects the general american population um okay there's the application there then you would just click submit and we would be done. It would be that easy. I would have all their contact information. I would call them, kind of walk over um, their, their basic application, structure everything uh, in my initial software, um, just to kind of see what they're pre-qualified for and um, reach out to them before, um, you know, pulling their credit or anything like that. But once I pull their credit, obviously I can, you know, analyze their debt to income ratio and start running it through different softwares, like my automated underwriting system on desktop underwriter. Um, which is what Fannie Mae's on or um, Loan Product Advisor on or Freddie um, for Freddie Mac. So I can start doing a lot of cool things um, and kind of teeing up their file and start gathering documents and have them um, enter in their documentation on their Blink portal. So um, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me at 
920-920-2747, or you can always go to my website, mortgagemario.com, uh, and I would happy to be of service. Have a wonderful day and stay safe.